Hello and uh, welcome to my analysis of the Game Golf device. Um, so for those of you who don't quite know what the Game Golf device is, uh, basically you just put uh, these these little attachments onto the back end of your grip. Um, so you put it on each of your golf clubs and then you've got this device that you attach to your belt and then when you hit each shot it kind of registers whereabouts you've uh, where you've been on the course. You can adjust it at the end um, so you can work out how far you was away with your putts um, if you've played three off the tee or any, any adjustments and then from there um, it gives you a really in-depth analysis of where you're losing your shots, where you're gaining the shots, and it gives you a really good uh, like kind of like area for improvement, and it even gives you advice on how to improve as well. So it's actually really good. I hugely recommend it. Um, so we're going to sort of anal analyze it through my my game, and um, I've done eleven rounds. You can see there, my score on average is seventy six point seven, um, and it kind of really highlights the weaknesses highlights the strengths and um and can really give you like a detailed analysis of your entire game so if i go on to uh, the home page so once we go into the game golf dashboard you log into your uh, email address and your account and it gives you up all your data you can go on a part here where it says insights and then from there so this is uh, the analysis of my game through all of the 11 rounds against the scratch golfer. Um, so in terms of my uh, tee shots and approach shots, um, they're very good. So the minuses I mean I'm I'm gaining shots on what a scratch golfer would do. And the ones that are in the pluses, so the ones that are up here, are the ones that I need to work on and I need to get a lot lower. Um, obviously the 11 rounds I've played have been in the middle of the winter, so the greens haven't been absolutely perfect so obviously that does come into consideration you do need to kind of think of the conditions you're playing in just a little bit otherwise um, you'd be chasing something that's quite hard to uh, quite hard to say for example give my putting down uh, below the scratch mark considering uh, the time of year it's obviously quite tough to um, to get that under but it should be lower than 3.24 so obviously that's a, a kind of area that I need to improve and a, and a weakness of mine that I need to uh, kind of pay attention to and if we uh, look below here it's, there's a part here that offers smart tips so it says if I practice my medium putts between 10 to 33 feet I'll lower my score by up to 2.3 strokes per round so out of the 11 rounds it would be quite on average that between 10 and 33 feet at some point um, in 18 holes at least once or twice I would uh, free putt so that's really an area that needs working on because even if like the greens are not the best, you still shouldn't really be free putting between 10 and 33 feet, but it is a tendency I just keep doing it uh, each round. So it's something that I need to improve on. Um, and also we'll do a follow up of this video as well on how I practice that weakness. And we'll kind of go into the analysis of how I'll prepare for an event and how I'll get my game so that we try to eliminate all of what, what this is showing us as the weaknesses and we try to improve on the strengths as well. And then we look onto the short game and it says that increase your accuracy by less than 25 yards from the rough to lower your score by 0 0.71. Um, so on this one we can just click to here and it gives us all of the shots that we've hit through all of the rounds uh, from the rough from 0 to 25 yards. So you can see a lot of these have come up short. So that would suggest that um, I need to be maybe picking a club that's going to release a little bit more. I might be picking a bit too much loft, trying to go quite hard at it. And because the greens are soft, that a lot of them are coming up short. And if we compare that, for example, to 0 to 25 yards uh, from the fairway, you can see a lot more are inside this five-yard circle. And there's only a couple of them that are short, so we really do need to... Kind of pay a little bit of attention to how I'm, my technique's working in the rough and that's kind of a little part that we can uh, work on a little part that we can try to analyze look through my chipping method on the fairway look through it on the rough and see if there's any noticeable difference that might kind of like save a few shots when we do go out and play if we go back onto the insights part here uh, you can see the approach shots are pretty good um, we have to work on the shots between 175 to 200 yards from the path threes uh, to lower my score by 0 0.18 which 
obviously every little helps um, but my approach shots are in good shape my uh, tee shots are in good shape as well um, but we really it is really highlighting kind of the short game and the putting because uh, as soon as we can get the putting uh, sort of to level this time of year and in, in the summer we want to try to be getting that to as much under as we can and the short game we want to try to get that to level or under because you know, if the short game and the putting improves uh, dramatically the consistency in the long game is really good um, so it's going to bring the scoring average down very quick so I really need to focus almost 80 percent of my attention on just short game of putting so we'll work out how i'm going to do that um, we'll look into the putting stroke we'll look into the short game we'll get some videos we'll anal analyze it on here we'll look at what uh, what we're going to change for the next round and we'll see if it makes a difference uh, but all in all um, for this time of year I, I, it's not too bad the scoring average needs to to go to go down at the moment it's uh, like we said 76.7 and these are all the rounds that I've played um, so we've played 11 rounds we got a high one there in, in the shores and dunes at uh, the princes and uh, it was I mean you can kind of look into each round, but I mean, if you look at how many greens in reg I hit, compared to like my putts were 2.28. Um, the wind was quite high that day, so it like my long game kind of managed in that, them kind of conditions. But then when I got onto the greens where it was windy, it, I just found it tough. The greens were actually that day really good. Um, and comparing that to the practice day that I played, I shot level par. The fairways were slightly higher, well actually quite a lot higher. The greens in reg were a little bit higher, but the putts were just that that much lower. So that kind of makes a massive difference in the score. Um, and it, the difference in, in two days there is 11 shots. I know the conditions were, were slightly different, but I mean 11 shots is too big of a difference and majority of that is made up from the putting. Uh, if we look at the best round was uh, just the other week at Chart Hills. Um, so we look at there and go, okay, what was fantastic that day and what was going well? Well, the fairways hit was was pretty normal, really. I've, I've always feel quite comfortable with my driver, so um, it's, I've never found it too difficult to hit to hit fairways and hit it quite a good distance as well. Um, so 57% is pretty good, but the noticeable difference, which is higher than any of the other ones, is 89% in the greening regs. So that would be 16 uh, greens and regulations that I hit that day with 1.83 putts. So putting all that together, um, it's good enough to be under par. But if you actually look at the round, and we'll go back into insights, we can select an individual round as well. So we'll select that day at Chart Hills. So if we look at this one here and then press select round. So for me to shoot under par at the moment, you can notice that it isn't more of a case of me reducing my uh, putting. The putting is completely what it is on average, so 3.67. So we really do need to focus on my putting because where I hit 16 greens, where I hit it quite close quite a lot of the time, um, I should have made more putts. Um, but the noticeable difference compared to all the rest was my approach shots. So that would have been uh, of the equivalent of uh, slightly better than plus five golfer. So that's like a really high standard, really tall standard, and I need to be taking advantage of that. And instead of shooting two under, probably shooting about six or seven under, really. Um, especially with the the tee shots as well being minus six, uh, zero point six seven, the short game being good that day as well. So we've just uh, instead of really posting a really low number, um, we've shot a good score at two under, but it could be that little bit better if that if the uh, putting goes down to sort of level, then that's another three point six seven shots better. So it's um it's a part that we really do need to work on. And then if we look at the flip side to that, where the bad round we played, uh, where we played at Princes. So if we go on to that one, we can see that, again, the approach shots were really good. Um, minus three, so we're playing that to a plus three handicapper in really tough wind conditions. But if we look at the putting, we're at... Uh, six over so we ne really need to be getting that down a little bit further I might have clicked on to the right one uh, yep yeah so we need to be aiming to try and reduce that down um, to be six over in putts and the approach shots to be that solid and the short game to be good um, we're just losing out a lot of shots on the putts so we really need to make that clear make it 
like even look into the routine, look into how we're lining the ball up. Are we taking enough time? Are we reading the green properly? So we really need to kind of go a bit more in detail on the putting. Um, but other parts on the game golf, there's so many good parts that you can look at. The club performance, for example. So if we select uh, the club performance option, it gives us, once the internet decides to load up, it gives us the uh, how far we're hitting each club. So driver at 270, which for this time of year isn't bad. Like usually uh, in the summer, that's a lot more. Now, it'll probably go over the 300 mark in the summer. Um, three with 238, hybrid 212. We can kind of keep uh, following it down so we can see maybe if any of our clubs need tweaking, the loft and lie. Um, so say, for example, here I look at the four iron. It should ideally go in like a diagonal. And then we know it's a little bit of a difference with the eight iron. And uh, like you can kind of read into that and go, okay, does the loft need checking uh, with the eight iron? And uh, I could actually look at the analysis of that and and say it's more of like a preference kind of thing that I do. But with the eight iron, I tend to, for some reason, always try and put the ball position that little bit further back. Not that it's uh, not that it's right, but I kind of it's that more of like a feel kind of shot that I want to hit a lot of the time. And um, just looking at this now, it's probably not the best thing to be doing because it's obviously de lofting the club a little bit, and we're we're kind of gaining another ten yards. And ideally, we want to be hitting that to around about this kind of area there. So so it keeps sort of everything in a nice diagonal line where we can uh, kind of get a yardage so we know what it what it is for this time of year. Um, so that's another part of game golf that's really good is you can kind of read into um, every part of your game to look at where we're hitting shots. So this is all uh, my shots off the tee. Majority are in the fairway, which is really good. Um, it's kind of even left and right. And you can kind of really build up a picture of uh, where your bad misses. So say, for example, more than 80% was on the left. We know that, okay, we've got a tendency of doing something that we need to correct. And, uh, and it kind of gives you a way of understanding that, going to your golf coach and going, okay, this is what I need to do. This is the reason it's missing there. And you can kind of talk to him about it and he'll, and he or she will kind of have that analysis and that feedback back for you that, um, you, you might be able to then understand the reason why it is going left and then you can kind of bring it all back onto more towards the fairway and then uh, keep analysing it for the following rounds and hopefully uh, it begins to get more onto the fairway and you can actually see yourself improving so it's a lot more motivating that way as well and with that as well you can select what club you want so we go with the driver here um, we can look at the driver and we go okay 53% on the fairway 24% left 23% right so again it's pretty even um, pretty solid, a lot of fairways hit, which is really good. If we compare it to our approach shots to the green, so from inside 100 yards, um, from all types of liars, they're yeah, pretty consistent. Um, we've got a couple quite close, and then we've got obviously a couple that are a lot further away, but it depends on it might have been a bad lie at the time, but if you feel like it might have been, you can kind of look onto, there uh, we go into the fairway and we go, okay, so a lot of these are now inside the 15 yard mark, which I mean, for inside 100 yards, instead of looking at 15 yard mark for myself, I personally look at more of like a 15 feet mark. Um, that's the kind of like scoring range where I feel like I can uh, get a one putt, get like a birdie and then move on. Um, and you can change the lies as well and change whether it's a bunker shot um, and all the types of lies around that you get on the course to, to see where the weakness is. And if we go outside 100 yards and we can look at all the shots and we look at how many are left, is there a lot short? Um, we might be misclubbing quite a lot of the time, so we need to maybe get a yardage done on a monitor or GC2 monitor, track man or something like that. Um, and then you can kind of really build up a good picture of what uh, what you're doing when you go out and play. So where you, you might think that you're choosing the right club, um, after you look at this, we can go, okay, quite a lot of them are short. So we probably need to be this time of year going up a club um, I do use my yardages, but I did them on a track command where um, it kind of sets the temperature of 70 degrees. And to be honest, the temperature I've been playing in the last 11 rounds have been no higher than about three degrees. So that's definitely something that does play a part in how far the ball goes, for example. Uh, and then we can build it up to scoring. And it kind of just gives us analysis of how many bogeys we're making, how many pars we're making, uh, how many birdies and, and doubles. And it gives us like a little feedback of 
Okay, we need to eliminate the amount of double bogeys we're making. We need to try to raise the birdies. So at the moment, it's only 12%. It needs to be a little bit higher than that. But the bogeys are 27%. So we need to try and switch that over. And that just hugely uh, changes the, uh, the score and average. Uh, and then you can, what the good part is, so we look at my score and average being 67, uh, 76.7, uh, sorry. Uh, and then you can kind of compare it to, say, the European Tour stats. Uh, so then you go, okay, top 110 in the European Tour, keep their card. And that's a guy called Nathan Holman, who's at 71.63. So I need to improve my game uh, to be consistently able to uh, maintain my tour card. I know the courses are different and they are longer, but they're in better condition than the ones I've been playing. Uh, so I need to improve my game by around about five shots around. Um, so we can look at five shots and we can look at where I can improve them. And if we go on to insights here, so we're looking at five shots. You know, if we add up uh, 1.78, 3.24, uh, we're, we're there straight away. So the putting short game, all of the attention needs to go there. And in ev the days where we do get the approach shots to minus three or minus five or, or better than what it is on average, they're the days that we go really low. But we need to, on average, be uh, having a more consistent short game and a more consistent uh, putting day. Um, and we need to get them as close to zero as we can to just be able to maintain our card. And you kind of move up the rankings. You look at Rory McIlroy at 68.75. So you're looking at eight shots that you need to improve there, which is that's a lot of shots. So that's with my approach shots would need to be really on point. But also these are going to have to be at zero or below just to get anywhere near that number. So it shows you the level of golf that Rory McIlroy is playing. Obviously, the conditions that he's playing in are a lot lot better, but the, the courses are a little bit tougher as well. So um, it's kind of a good realization of, okay, the, the approach shots really do need to improve. Um, they need to consistently carry on improving. So that can that can consistently get to like minus three. Then we need to get the short game below this zero mark. We need to get the putting below the zero mark to have that scoring average the Rory McIlroy post on a consistent basis. Um, and you can kind of really read into the European Tour stats and then compare it to your own so we can really see where we're at. So it's really good for guys that are looking to get onto the European Tour. Um, I know that obviously when you're having to play an event and you keep having to um, to kind of use the tag to, to uh, alert where you are on each shot, uh, it's a bit of a hassle and it's kind of like something that you might forget to do. But... If you can get these kind of stats at the end of it, then it's definitely worth doing. Um, and you can use them in events as well. So it's really worth doing. It's really a good kind of uh, analysis instead of at the moment where a lot of people use uh, strokeaverage.com and then you have to go after your round, it takes you about an hour and a half just to put all of your stats in. Uh, and then by the time you've done that for an hour and a half, as, as dedicated as you are, your mind's always that little bit kind of you just learn your lesson, look over it, and then it's, it's quite a quick analysis. Well, with this, it takes so quick just to get all the stuff on there that you can actually spend a good hour just looking all the way through this and looking at where you really need to adjust your game. Um, and it just gives you that extra bit of motivation to really look at where your weaknesses are and then kind of move forward from there. So um, a good part also to the game golf um, is that you can go onto players here and you can find whoever else has got a game golf and you can follow them and um, you can go for all the stats you can look at say uh, Graham McDowell is one of the ambassadors for it so we can look on here Lee Westwood Graham McDowell what their scoring averages are um, I think personally out of 12 rounds Lee Westwood scoring average 67.9 I think that he must have <laughs> must have put quite a lot of good rounds in there because if you're looking at number one at the moment 68.75 um, Rory McIlroy so he's obviously put a few good rounds in and hasn't quite put the, the bad score in I think just to kind of show that the um, the scoring average is low which is obviously good and it's like good to compare to but it doesn't quite give a full picture um, so you need to kind of try and go against maybe someone of your ability that you're looking on there where they're putting every single score in just so you can get some kind of analysis of your game against what theirs is or the guy who's who's next level up to you that you kind of want to try to learn off and see what they're doing different to you. But you can select 
uh, what players you want. So for example, we'll choose Graham McDowell. And then with that, you can look at the scoring average. One second. We'll look at the scoring average. You can compare uh, each of the stats and you can look at where the areas of improvement are needed. So GIRs, for example, 65% 73 isn't too bad. Scrambling, huge difference. He's making almost double the amount of up and downs that I am. Uh, and then we go putts per hole. There's a huge difference there. So 0.3 every single hole is putting better than me. So you're looking at every three holes. Uh, he's holding one more putt than me. And it adds up through space of 18 holes. That's quite a lot of shots. So it's definitely an area that really does need focus. Obviously, Graham McDowell playing in... Uh, playing in Florida on the purest of greens is going to make a big difference to myself playing on greens that have just been holotined or a bit bobbly but it still needs to be closer to 1.6 and 1.9 so um, it is something that does need improving um, also on this as well so you can set challenges so if you if your friends have got a game golf as well um, you can set up a challenge you can kind of do who makes the most birdies in 10 rounds who shoots the lowest score in average uh, and then you can both kind of uh, compete against each other, see how many you get. And it's always quite good fun just to see uh, how all of your game shapes up. So you might shoot a really bad score, but it might all be in one area. It might not be uh, it might not be your, your long game. It might just be down to your short game. So you know that when you see your coach next time, you don't necessarily need to keep working on your long game thinking that's the error. Um, you go onto the short game area keep working on that, looking at where the problems are, see if you can pick a safer shot maybe, and then just aim to make more up and downs, and then go back and play, use a couple of rounds, see if it has improved, and if it has, keep doing more of that. Um, and it's just a really good uh, base to really judge your game at, um, and it's good to kind of explore what uh, certain players do well, uh, what certain players struggle with, um, and it's a good platform to really improve your game at. So. Uh, personally, I'd recommend Game Golf hugely. I think that uh, it's one of the best analysis um, devices that I've seen in a long time. I used to use the one we used to uh, put it in by hand before, and it just takes so long, but this one's a lot easier. Um, you simply just put it in the USB, put it into your computer, put it all in, and you've got all your analysis there in literally about a minute. So, um, yeah, it's really good. I uh, couldn't recommend it more. Um, yeah, let me know if, if any of you do buy it and if you uh, do go onto it, then follow me. Um, my name's Paul Elvin. Uh, you can find it in the search bar um, at the top of the uh, dashboard. And you can search for players in the explore. And you go onto there and then you find a player and you can uh, find me on there and you can add me. Um, yeah, let us know how it goes. Find your feedback. Let me know uh, what parts of the game you need improving. Um, and I'm more than happy to, to offer some help with the YouTube videos. So if any of you find that you're struggling with a certain part, I'll make a YouTube video and we'll kind of go through it all and we'll see how we can improve your game as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, comment on the page as well, and I'll be more than happy to get back to you.